Hey Siri, turn on office lights. I got no sleep last night. I woke up in the middle of the night, tummy ache. Apparently I should not eat an entire pint of Ben & Jerry's right before bed. Not the best idea. Woke up in the middle of the night, not feeling too great, but the ice cream was good. So this morning I just got done reviewing and making some corrections, just some photos for a client that my editor got back to me this morning. Um, yeah, always have a few little minor tweaks when I get the photos back from the editor, but Using a editor for all my real estate photos has been huge. I mean, before you'd shoot all day, come home, edit everything, edit videos, it took a lot of time. So now, oh man, it's just fantastic. I come home, I edit my videos still, um, but I have that down, that workflow down really good. But now I just send off all the photos to an editor who edits them while I sleep, and then they're ready in the morning. It's been a huge time saver. Like I can actually enjoy my evenings again. It's great. This morning I have a real estate shoot. Well, that I always have a real estate shoot. That's that's the main deal. So a real estate shoot at 10, another one at one. Uh, I try to space them out so I have enough time to uh, travel, of course, and then it's Friday. So I try to keep Fridays a little bit lighter going into the weekend, which is, it's been really nice. But um, yeah, so I got to pack up my gear for that. And so let's get going. It is hot in here. It's, it's 88 degrees outside. Hotter in here because, well, there's no blinds. The AC's not on. The sun's just baking this listing. It's, it's really hot. But I just wrapped up the interior photos and exterior. Gotta go fly the drone, get some drone shots, some drone video of this listing. Um, not flying the Mavic 3 yet. Still sticking with the Mavic uh, 2 Pro in my bag because well, you're gonna have to wait for the full review of uh, my initial thoughts of the Mavic 3 because, yeah, I'm sticking with this in my camera bag for jobs as of right now. But this listing is gonna come out really nice. You guys wanna see it? So here it is. This is a really nice listing. The kitchen's beautiful. Just check out the kitchen. Yeah, this is gonna come out really nice. Here, maybe if I have the photos back in time, I'll throw a couple up right now. First listing shoot of the day done. It is a 11.45. That one took about eh, 15, 20 minutes longer than it should have, which isn't too bad. Stuff's just not always ready when you show up as a real estate photographer. So you gotta make sure lights are on, blinds are open, 
it takes a little bit longer sometimes, but not that bad. You just gotta schedule accordingly. So my next shoot is in one hour, which should give me enough time to get there and maybe grab some lunch because it's a, it's in an hour and it's about half an hour away. So that gives me about a half hour cushion, which isn't bad. I'm, I'm happy with that. So because this one took a little bit longer and everything takes longer when you're vlogging, um, how about I just go and rush through that next one? Well, not rush through, we're gonna do a good job, but we're gonna get it done and I'll see you guys back at the office. And why don't I share with you uh, everything that's in my bag for real estate shoots? All right, all right. Oh, nice and clean because it was hot today. Woo wee, middle of November. It's like in the 90s here in San Diego. Clean shower, nice cold beer. Let's talk about all the camera gear I carry to my shoots. Um, it's a lot of stuff. So let's start with the backpack. So I am using the Peter McKinnon Nomadic backpack, the, the original one that he released, not the small one, the, the big one. Now it's a heavy backpack, but it carries a lot, which means it gets even heavier. But I've learned that instead of just carrying what you need for the day for my shoots, I need to carry just everything I could possibly need in case a customer doesn't know that something they want is included in the package they ordered or they want to upgrade. I want to have all my gear with me so I can fulfill all my customers' needs. All right, let's get the big stuff out of the way. Tripod is just a Manfrotto travel tripod. You can pick this up at Best Buy. It's really inexpensive. No thrills. It's, it's just a tripod. It works good enough. And then this big awkward piece of gear is my RS2 uh, from DJI. It's a gimbal, so I can do video work. It's heavy. It's lighter than the original gimbal, but it still gets heavy, especially when you load it down with all the gear I'm going to show you. So yeah, this is the gimbal I use. Now let's get to all the stuff that I carry in the backpack. First up, my camera. This is the Nikon Z6 paired with a 14 to 30 f4 lens. So any camera will do when it comes to real estate photography. Um, if you can do a full frame, even better, because if you're using a crop sensor, you need a probably like a 10 millimeter lens. You want as wide as possible with a crop sensor. Um, 14 is pretty wide on this. This is a full frame. Sometimes I zoom into 16 or 18, just depending on the shot and what I don't want in the shot or what I do want in the shot. But yeah, uh, any DSLR or mirrorless camera will do. There's plenty of tutorials on how you should shoot real estate photography. Um, and there's a couple different ways. So I do uh, bracketed shots. I don't do any flambient, which means I don't do any flash. I take uh, multiple exposures, um, a middle exposure, couple over, couple under, and blend them in post. Well, I have my editor blend them in post now. And then I do the final corrections. So yeah, this is the main camera I use. It's a Nikon Z6 paired with the 14 to 30 F4. You do not need a fast lens for real estate photography. Actually, you don't want one. Um, I usually shoot at f8 all the time because you want as much in focus when it comes to real estate photography. So you're not really looking for that shallow depth of field unless a client wants some like lifestyle staging kind of shots to, to feature like certain aspects of the home. Then I might use a faster lens, but for the most part, wide and not wide open. We want it stopped down. Let's talk about video now. Uh, I don't use the Nikon for video. I'm not a big fan of Nikon's video. I just don't like the picture that comes out of it. I just something about uh, just Nikon colors. I, I'm, it's great for photography, but I just don't like it for video, even though that's what I'm using for uh, most of the vlog style stuff right now. I'm not crazy about it, but it works but I don't like using it for client work. What I do use for client work is a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So this is a 6K camera. Um, it's basically a miniature cinema camera. It's great. The colors that come out of here are fantastic. Now for real estate, I don't shoot raw video because the files are just too big. You, you don't need it. And I try to minimize my workflow. So I shoot in 4K. Um, you can still use the, the full size of the sensor. It doesn't crop in on the sensor, which is really nice. So uh, 4K and I shoot with my with my LUT, my color, my colors baked in. So not log, not flat. I shoot everything baked in, which means you got to nail it in camera. You got to get it right. Uh, you, you have a little bit of play, but you really need to get your white balance right on the money. It makes the workflow a lot quicker when you do that. So I shoot, I, when I shoot my listings, I shoot from 
I shoot it in order so I can just drop it all in my editor. So shoot the front, interior, upstairs, if there's an upstairs, backyard, and then a pull away shot. So everything's shot in order so I can just chop it up real quick. I shoot at, on, I would prefer to shoot in 60, but I shoot in 50 on this. So 50 frames a second so I can slow it down so you get just really, really nice smooth footage. But yeah, this is what I use. Shoot in 4K, 50 frames a second with my LUTs, which are your color profiles, uh, baked in. So I don't have to do a ton of editing. I just want to chop it up to the music, which I use a few of the same songs. So it just makes it easy. It's all about workflow for me. The quicker you can get it done, the quicker you can get to the client and you're off to the next job. The lens I'm using, because this is a super 35 sensor, you want a very wide lens. So this is a Tokina 11 to 16. It is very fast. It is an F 2.8, which sometimes I will have to open up to that because you need as much light as possible when you're doing video. F 2.8, I try to stay around F 4 so I can get a lot of stuff in focus. Um, I'll shift between an ISO 400 or 3200 on this camera because it's got dual native ISOs and those are the native ISOs. So it's a very clean image and you get as much light in the camera as possible. So 11 to 16, I'll use the full range of that. Um, I'll use 11 a lot. I'll zoom into about 13 when I'm outside because I'll use an ND filter. This is a Peter McKinnon VND 2 to 5. It's an 82 millimeter uh, filter. So I need a, a step down rain. With the step down rain, I gotta zoom in a little bit. Otherwise I get a little bit of black on the side. So um, keep that in mind. But yeah, that's that's a lot. That's, that's what I use for video. Makes very, very nice images, just amazing. Just so, so much better than the Nikon. Oh, and manual focus. Always manual focus so you can, you, well, this camera doesn't really have autofocus. So manual focus anyway, but that way you can choose what you want and focus. No matter what camera you're using, if you're shooting video for real estate, make sure you're using manual focus. To power the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, I'm using a V-mount battery. This is from ND Pro and it is a 98 watt hour battery. So actually, hold on, let me find the gimbal. So I have a little V-mount um, clamp right here and then I'll just put this right on and then plug it into the camera. And then I got enough power for as many shoots as I'm doing that day. I will not run out of power using a V-mount and that's just held on by this little V-mount grip thing, whatever we want to call it. It's, uh, you know, it's just attached to my back handle. All right, what else do we have? The drone, the drone that I'm using is the Mavic 2 Pro right now. Um, I do have the Mavic 3, which you hopefully have seen the unboxing link above. Um, I haven't flown it much yet, so I don't wanna take it on a client shoot because I wanna know that camera before um, I use it on a shoot and know that drone, everything that it does. But my initial thoughts, just uh, flying it in the front of my house, just to get some B-roll of the actual drone uh, for my review. It, it's very limited right now on the firmware. It needs a firmware update. So right now I'm not gonna use it for client work unless it's video only, but most of my drone work for clients includes video and photos. Um, and I shoot everything bracketed, even my drone stuff. And the Mavic 3 won't do brackets yet for some reason. So sticking with the Mavic 2 Pro. And of course we got some more Polar Pro ND filters for the drone. Uh, what do we have here? We have four, eight, and I believe uh, 16, which is on the drone. So if it's sunny, 16, just living on there. If it's cloudy, it's eight. And yeah, that's that's the drone. Tons of batteries, you carry about three or four batteries. Of course, the remote Polar Pro case for all my memory cards, so they're protected. Oh, for, <clears throat> before I forget, for, um, for memory, for shooting video. I will use a, T5, a Samsung T5 SSD. This is a little SSD holder from Small Rig with a cold shoe adapter. So that will just sit right on top. The hard drive will go right here and then a plug into the camera. So that's memory for, for the, the Blackmagic. I've already talked about the VND. We have backup batteries for the Blackmagic, just in case these are Canon batteries that work in the Blackmagic camera. A power cable, a D-tap to the whatever pin this is for the black magic then we have a little peak design bag which holds a lot of stuff i got a cpl filter this will screw on to my my camera usually for photos if there's a lot of glare off 
like wood floors, uh, this will cut down on the glare. It's, it's super helpful. I'll carry all my extra batteries for the Nikon in here, uh, some cleaning stuff for the camera, extra batteries, just random stuff so it doesn't roll around in the bag and get lost. Up here on the top flap, we have some spare props for the drone, just in case. Let's hope we don't have a crash, but just in case. And then in here, we'll go the iPad uh, for doing virtual tours. So let me show you that stuff. So up in this top compartment will be my stuff for doing virtual tours. So uh, this is like a little Manfrotto um, monopod like kit. It's not a true monopod, but um, this extends out and screws into this. And then this opens up and then my 360 camera will go right up on top. Now you could use a normal tripod and put a plate on the 360 camera, but the way that, that uh, Matterport works, it's what I use for my, my virtual tours, it blurs out what's right underneath. And sometimes, sometimes uh, it doesn't get all the legs if you use a normal tripod. So using a little monopod, you never have to worry about it, never ever. And then the 360 camera of choice, I've done a little video on this. I, I used to use the Insta360 One X. And it was good, but this is way better. So this is the, the Ricoh Theta Z1. It's a, it's a 360 camera and it's great for Matterports because the Matterport camera itself is ridiculous. It, it's like three or four grand and does one thing and one thing only, and that's Matterports. So 360 camera, way more uses for this and just a better, it's, it's more cost effective. All right, that's almost everything. I will also carry with me uh, some microphones. So these are the Rode Wireless Go 2s. You have a receiver and two transmitters. Uh, sometimes agents will wanna do a little intro or outro uh, for their walkthrough video. So I can just throw this on them, plug this into the Blackmagic camera, and we, we have audio. Yes, that is just about everything. The last thing, of course, is my phone. So this is the iPhone 12 Pro. Yes, iPhone 12 Pro. So it has a LiDAR sensor. So I use an app uh, called Cuba Casa. This thing's great. So it uses the LiDAR sensor in your phone to scan the house. So you gotta walk the whole house. You scan kind of just the baseboards. You don't need to hold it up. You actually wanna hold it down. Yeah, it just uses LiDAR and scans the whole house so you can make floor plans. It's, it's really nifty, it's great. So yeah, that, that's awesome. Well, that, that's everything guys. I think, yeah, I don't, I don't think I missed anything. Um, I, hope, I hope you found that interesting. It's, it's a lot of stuff, but actually going through it with you guys, it's, it's not as much as you think. It, it could be way more. Uh, I love using that backpack. Um, there's a couple different options that I've looked into but if I got to carry everything, I don't want to carry multiple bags and multiple cases if I don't have to. I just want everything in one bag. And so this bag, as heavy as it is, just holds everything. I just have to grab it and go and I'm, I'm set. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you have any questions about, you know, any of the gear I use on real estate listing shoots, let me know down in the comments. I'd, I'd love to answer any of the questions you have. And if you want to check out any of this gear, most of it is linked below. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ooh. Ooh.